Two or three of us, the rest of us get on board tonight. Amen. Amen. He's worthy of all of our praise tonight. Amen. We have a few written requests we don't remember tonight. Uh, I want to say his name is Brother Mike. He's the architect that's uh, going to be over the project here at the church. Uh, his, if my understanding is correct, his feet got to swelling so bad that it literally broke bones in his feet he, he he had several bones broken in his feet and he had to have surgery and um, his other foot was swollen also and he broke two bones in that one and he has pins and a halo and I don't know what all that goes with it but he asked for prayer tonight so let's remember him in our prayer God is mindful of these requests if somebody has faith enough to ask us let's have faith enough to believe that God's going to move for them tonight Amen. Also, I think Sister Wanda's dad is, is in the hospital as we speak. He had stepped on a nail, I want to say a year ago or, or something like that. And uh, I think he had to have one of his toes removed. So he's having surgery, having one of his, his toes removed. So let's remember Brother Johnny in our prayers tonight. God is mindful. Amen. We want to continue to remember Sister Debbie and Sister Judith in our prayers as well. We're just looking for testimony to come forth of God's amazing grace to us tonight. Amen. If you have something on your heart, just let it be known by an uplifted hand. God sees our needs tonight. Amen. Good to have Brother Jonathan back with us tonight. Amen. And the Jones bench filled up a little bit back there tonight. Amen. Come ahead, Brother Jonathan, if you would lead us in prayer. Amen. You come to praise him tonight. Amen. You praise him and he'll give what we have need of. Heavenly Father, Lord. Lord, once again, Lord, we find ourselves, Lord, with an opportunity, Lord, to worship you, Lord. Lord, we find ourselves gathered back together, Lord, in one accord. Lord, gathered to hear from you, Lord. Lord, we ask you to come vindicate yourself afresh to us tonight, Lord. Lord, come move for these requests, Lord. As Brother Mike, if that would be his name, the architect, Lord. Lord, in his feet, Lord, would you just go visit him, Lord. Lord, begin the healing process tenfold, Lord. Just let it become such a miraculous, Lord, that he knows someone touched God. Lord, you see the needs of this church, Sister Debbie, Sister Judith. Lord, the different ones, Lord. Lord, we continually, Lord, lift them up in prayer, Lord, believing, Lord, and having faith, Lord. Though that we can't see, Lord, you're already moving, Lord. Though we can't know it, Lord, but we know by faith that you're on the scene, Lord Jesus. Lord, you see this service tonight, Lord. Lord, I ask you to move for us, Lord. Move, Brother Mark, Lord. Move each one of us, Lord. Just let us each one step aside from ourselves, Lord. Forget about the daily activities, Lord, and come to worship you tonight, Lord Jesus. Bless our pastor, Lord. Give him the words of eternal life that we have need of, Lord. Lord, Lord, we give it all to you now. Lord, we worship you. We praise you. Lord, we love you in your lovely name. The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. amen. And I forgot a request too. And I want to read this to you. I forgot all about it. When I was a teenager in Johnson City, uh, actually I probably started maybe in my middle school years. If not, I know I did the high school. Uh, I started working at a convenience market in in town, and uh, there was a gentleman that was my boss. His name was Rick Foster. And I haven't seen the brother in years and years and years. My dad is running into him several times. Um, but then they sent my mom and dad a text this week, and I just wanted to read that to you. Um uh, Said so Rick Foster, my husband, he used to be the manager at Holiday Market, has just been diagnosed 
with stage four lung cancer and that has spread to his bones and, and said, does your dad still minister? If so, Rick would like for him to come and pray over him and could you let him know? And then they sent another text right after that one and said he is at home now after spending 11 days in the hospital uh, and they gave their address and phone number said he has so much faith and believe that, believes that God will heal him. I have some friends who are very religious. They said that Rick needs to have a pastor to lay hands on him and pray for him. And I told him today what they said, and he said, I know who to ask. He said, I asked who? And he said, Brother Bill Yance. He said, so tell your dad to please call and set up a time to come and pray for him. Amen. I thought that was so special. I said, they know who to ask. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I mean, we wasn't even around them that much, but they just seen us coming and going. But I know who to ask. Praise the Lord. I hope that's a testimony of each and every one of us tonight. I know who to go to. Praise the Lord. So let's remember that request tonight for uh, Rick Foster with that cancer. If he has faith enough to believe like that, let's just believe with him tonight that all things are possible. Amen. And tonight I, I had something totally different uh, for the technicians, so if they'll forgive me, this song just came on my heart. I, I, tonight, I just feel like I want to be here in just total surrender. How many just want to surrender everything to God tonight? Amen. Give, uh, D. D. All to Jesus I
I don't have much to surrender, but such as I have, I do surrender. The only thing I have is what He's given me. So I, I just want to surrender everything I have back to Him tonight. So Lord, just take it and use it for Your glory. Amen. Let's sing this and be glad. Oh, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, sinking to rise. for the love of God. How rich and how pure and how measureless. Amen. Amen. Oh, and what a fellowship. What a joy to mind.
on everlasting arms. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And I'm so glad that you. be tonight if he hadn't. Praise the Lord. You can have your seats. We'll have our ushers to come. I'm putting on my glasses for this because I understand that I made an error on Sunday and I had uh, one or two or three or ten people remind me. So I wanted to get it straight tonight and make sure I did it correctly. Our anniversary meetings, as you know, are coming up August the 24th and 25th. That is uh, next weekend. And Sunday after church, there's a dinner at the McFadden Park, and it's going to be catered by Texas Roadhouse. And the price for the adults, see this with glasses, it says 11. But when I didn't have my glasses, it looked like a 16. So I told everybody too much. I was trying to get a little tip, I guess. But it's $11 for adults, okay, and $5.50 for kids. So please uh, try to have that turned into Sister Deanna by August the 19th. All right, and then also I believe we have a couple of birthdays uh, this week. Uh, in fact, maybe today is Sula Bukasa's birthday. I don't think she's here tonight. And also on Friday, Brother Riley Franklin is going to have his one-year birthday. So I want to wish him a very happy birthday tonight. Amen. We're going to sing one more song, then I think Sister Honora is going to come and sing for us because she wants to be getting ready. <clears throat> Amen. Let's sing this in the key of G. I pledge allegiance to the land with all of my strength. With all Aren't you proud of Can all 
strength that I have, I pledge allegiance to him tonight. After all he's done for me, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I pledge allegiance to him tonight? Go ahead, Sister Honora. Same way. We'll spare your life if you'll just denounce the name of Christ. How many would just give in just to take care of their own self? Number one. I heard one time uh, some, we had a similar question like what if you were in front of a firing squad and they told you to, to denounce Christ what would you do he said well, I think I'd just do it and then I'd ask forgiveness after it was all over I said I'm afraid you wouldn't be getting any it'd be too late then amen so I want to stand for him tonight don't you I'll stand for Jesus and let the world go by praise the Lord Jesus, the light of the world. He's shining so bright tonight. Isn't he? Amen. Let's stand together, if you will, before we change the order of service and invite our pastor to come and deliver what God has laid on his heart for us tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Feel this void and emptiness. Shine your light.
to Almighty God to fill our hearts. You know, I want my heart to be filled with the things of God. It's so easy that we can fill up with things in this life that is such, of such non-essentials. I want God to fill our hearts and our lives today. So good to be in the house of the Lord with you this uh, evening and appreciate our musicians and want to turn you right straight to the word this um, evening in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1. This is leading up to the Israelites encamping at Kiddush Barnea. Uh, Israel had journeyed on this side of the wilderness for 40 years. I believe uh, it would have taken them 11 days journey from Mount Sinai to Kiddush Barnea. And we understand it took them 40 years. And um, <clears throat> during that period from Mount Sinai to Kiddush Barnea, as we look at it on the map, uh, the Israelites had encamped 18 times at different intervals. And uh, God now speaking to uh, the Israelites. Moses had, had just got through slaying the king of the Amorites and king of uh, Basan. And he speaks now in verses, uh, I believe it's verses uh, 6. And the Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying... He have dwelled long enough on this mount. Turn you and take your journey and go into the mount of the Amorites and unto all the places nigh thereunto in the plain and in the hills and in the valley and in the south and by the seaside to the land of the Canaanites and unto Lebanon and unto the great river, the river Euphrates. So as behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land 
which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. What a promise. Amen. What a promise God gave them, that he will give them the land. And then in Joshua chapter uh, 3, verses 11. God had told them they will drive out the occupants. In verses 10 and verses 11. And behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. Now therefore take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel. Go of every tribe a man. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord... Uh, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. God given instructions now that the moment that the Israelites step into their God's provided place, that God will start doing miracles. And the waters that were now their enemies will stand on the side while they walk through on dry land. And then in Joshua 5, verses 2. Understand, 11 days from Mount Sinai to Kiddush Barnea, 11 days journey, took 40 years, and here's why. In verses 2, And at the time the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives, and circumcise again the children of Israel, uh, the second time, and Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the uh, four skins. And this is the same. Uh, this is this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise all the people that came out of Egypt that were male, even all the men of war died in the wilderness. By the way, after they came out of Egypt. Now, all the people that came out were circumcised, but not all the people that were born in the wilderness, by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness, till all the people that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, Unto whom the Lord swear that he will not show, show them the land which the Lord swear unto their fathers that he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. Imagine that. God allowed 40 years journey. That should have taken uh, 11 days. 40 years journey now because of the elders of Israel that did not obey the voice of God. And God said, I'm going to destroy this generation and because I've already spoken that they will not see the land. You see how God's mind, how he sets things in his place. God is serious about his word. And he says now, let's just uh, uh, go down to verses uh, 7. And their children whom he has raised up in, in their stead, them just were circumcised, for they were uncircumcised, because they had not circumcised them by the way. And it came to pass when they had done circumcising all the people that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the stone, uh, the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month, at evening in the plains of Jericho. Verses 11. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on tomorrow after the Passover, unleavened cake and parched corn in the selfsame day. And the manna ceased on tomorrow after they had eaten of the uh, old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more. 
But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. What a promise. What a promise God gave us. I want to speak to you this uh, evening on the thought, go in and possess the land. We spoke last Sunday on writing the checks. And I'd like to encourage you to go in and possess your, your land that God has promised you. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we deem it such a privilege to be in the house of God. And we thank you for this gathering this evening as the people has gathered in. Uh, some are out traveling. Others, uh, maybe other things have come up today, Lord. But we have come in the house of the Lord to hear from you tonight. We ask that the Spirit of God will say something to us that will uh, draw us closer to you. Make us a better people when we leave this place. Help us, I pray. We're gathered here for one purpose that is to be drawn closer to you. Have your way now in this meeting in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the church says, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We appreciate each and every one of you. You may be seated. Go in and possess the land. And Brother Branham made a beautiful statement and a message. Israel and the church, he says, Come, let's cross this Jordan. Let's go over and possess the land. He said, come, let's cross this Jordan. Let's go over and possess the land. You know, it is a wonderful thing to journey with God. It is a wonderful thing to see the supernaturals of God. As I mentioned, there were 18 times that the Israelites had encamped before they actually reached Kadesh Barnea. You see, there were many, many events that took place in that 18 times that they stopped. There were many things that they experienced. There were many things that they saw with their own eyes as the people of God. There were many wonders that they beheld. There were many difficulties that they had encountered. But understand that God had brought them to this place for a purpose. So we see there that we can go back tonight in our life's journey and look back upon many things in our lives. From the time that we received our first experience. From the time that we remember that we give our heart to Christ, so to speak. We can reminisce many things in our lives tonight. But that is not the end of our journey. You see, Israel journeyed 40 years in the wilderness. Then now they're advancing towards uh, a place called Jordan. A place that God has told them that He had told them that He would bring them to. You see, I want to give tonight for a recount the events and what took place actually at Mount Sinai. Because the Bible says they went from Horeb to uh, Kedesh Barnea. It should have taken them 11 days. We understand that this was a site of the original awe and shock of God's presence. Mount Sinai was the place that the Israelite at first encountered the, the power of God and the glory of Almighty. You see, we go back and we see many things that happened there. They witnessed the lightning and the thunder and the fire and the smoke and the trumpets sounding from the valleys, from the summits. The great awe shot of God's presence at Mount Sinai as the children of Israel moved in to behold this great pillar of fire on Mount Sinai. What a sight for the Israelites. You see, all they were used to is being under bondage and under the taskmasters of of Pharaoh. But now God had pulled them out to a place. And they're now on the side of Mount Sinai. And they're witnessing things that never seen before. The thunder of God, the lightning of God, the fire, the smoke. The trumpet of God blasting forth. And I can can imagine what an awe shock this was to the early Israelites. You see, the people were so terrified that they insisted that Moses stayed between them and God. They had never experienced God on this level. They have never seen God by His power and His anointing on this magnitude before. And the people pleaded on Moses and said, Look, uh, don't let God speak to us. We don't want God to speak to us anymore. 
They had wanted God to speak to us. They had thought they wanted God to speak to them. But when God began to rumble and thunder by His fire, the people then set Moses between them and God. Is that correct? You see, it was a place where Moses met and had 40 days conversation with God. It's a spiritual place. Understand that Mount Sinai is a very spiritual place. It was a place that God met with Moses. He had a lip to ear communication there with Moses. It was at this mount, also called Horeb, where the children of Israel had some of their most profound experiences and revelation about God. It was right here on Horeb where Abraham had the revelation of Jehovah Jireh. It was here where the Israelites first encountered God, not just by a, 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 a name, but somehow by a revelation. Do you believe that? It was here they gained insights into their previously nameless and imageless God. Uh, by a revelation of Jehovah. It was here that God first revealed Himself as Jehovah Jireh. Otherwise, all they knew was a God that exists, a nameless God, a God that uh, did not have an image or a form. And they knew Him by a God or the God of their fathers. But here on Mount Oreb, which is Mount Sinai, God revealed Himself by a name to the Israelites. God now forming Himself from what He was in the unseen into the reality of humans so where they can see Him and know Him not as a myth, but as a reality. We see it was from these peaks that they learn about God's character through the revelation of the Ten Commandments. They can see the flames of God going out on the mountain and the entire mount of God inflamed by a holy fire. They had never seen this before. They had never known this before. They now learn of a name now. They're seeing the glory of God as it moved over Mount Sinai. The smoke of God's glory as His finger comes down and writes the Ten Commandments. What an experience for the early early Israelites. You see, this was an incredible, uh, prominent landmark, we will say. Both geographically and and, and spiritually for this uh, young nation called Israel. You see, they had never experienced that before. But yet God was pouring these experiences into their lives as they, as they now begin to learn of Him. You know, God does many things for us when we first come to Him. And He still does. And now here He is, He's manifesting Himself to Israel, showing Himself visible, showing the supernatural, showing that He's God. And and it attracted the early Israelites. They say there's something about this God. We had never witnessed that in Egypt. There's no idols or no image down there. They can speak like this God. You see, there was no image that Pharaoh can bring before them that had a voice behind it. There was no image that had a real name behind it. There was no image that had the flame of God that they can see with their visible eyes. But now God is bringing this uh, young nation into the reality of who He really is. And what an experience that was. Now in our text, Moses receives a word from God in Deuteronomy. And God speaks and says, The Lord our God has said to us, at Horeb, he have stayed long enough at this mountain. He's speaking now to the Israelites. I've given you the recount of all their many experience. The name of God revealed. The supernatural presence of God. The great things that I witnessed. But now God is saying that you have stayed on this mount too long. Those experiences were fine and those things were great in your lives. But there is greater, there's a greater purpose in your life. There's something much, much more that I want to do in your life. You can't stay in the wilderness. You can't just continue making stops. You can't just rely on somebody else's experience. 
You cannot just want to just love to see the glory of God and enjoy to see the miracles and behold the glory of the supernatural. You can't just name the name of God. You can't just say the name of Jesus. It's not good enough. I've got something else for you. Amen. When I say it's not good enough, I meant it's more. There's more of it. Amen. God has more for you. It's good, but God wants more for you. Some people just recite the name of Jesus and never gets anything from God because they have been encamping on this side of Jordan. They have been between Horeb and Kedesh Barnia too long. But the message I give you tonight is go in and possess your land. Don't just cry to Jesus. Don't uncall in the name of Jesus. If you never went into the promised land, that's why Brother Brown said you'll call and never get anything from God. You believe that tonight? So he said, Lord of God said unto us at Horeb, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Now I want you to break camp and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. Hallelujah. It's time to break camp tonight. Advance into the hill country of the Amorites. It's time for you to advance in and take your possession. You can't just dream about it. You can't just talk about it. You can't just poem about it. You can't just sing about it. You've got to walk into that land. Are you with me tonight? So the Israelites now is there to break camp. Even though they had such great experience. Amen. They've seen all these great things. Brother and sister, you and I have seen a lot of great things. We have witnessed a lot of supernaturals. We have seen many things happen in our day. But you see, friends, we have stayed on this side of Jordan way too long. And God is saying to us tonight, go in and take the land. Go in and take your possession tonight. You see, instruction had come that it's time to make a move tonight. Instruction that came to the Israelites. You have seen the glory of God. You have seen the power of God. But I want to give you more of Christ. I want to give you more revelation. More uh, Jesus in your life. More of His presence in your lives tonight. You see, some people are just uh, satisfied just to go on their past experiences. Just to rely on what they have seen or what they used to have. You see, that's expired. You've got to move to something now that God is moving. Understand, the Israelites moved 18 times. Watch this now. And the pillar of fire stopped and moved 18 times. You know, God will bring you in a journey. And maybe you've stopped and you've moved and you've stopped and you've moved. But it's time now God is saying, you need to move right into your promised land. You believe it tonight? You see, God was basically forcing the Israelites to to leave past experiences behind because there were more of Him to be revealed. There were more of God to be revealed. You know, that's why we're here. Because there's more of God to be revealed. There's more of God to be revealed. And when Christ is revealed in your life, then you'll be changed from this dimension. When the full revelation of who God is and the veil has been taken back, you will see Him as He is. Now we see it through our glass, just play out darkly. But then face to face, we shall see Him tonight. I believe God is moving His church to that place. But I, I want to I wanna tonight just tune this message in because it is so rather uh, important to know where we stand in this last day. I believe there's more of Christ to be revealed. you believe that? I believe the revealed word has come, but that revealed word has to be personal to us tonight. It can't just stay in the magnetic tapes. It can't just stay in the books. It has to be a reality. It can't just be a past experience to us. It has to be a living, fresh manner in this day, just like it fell when God gave it to us. You see, they were made to leave. Watch this. They were made to leave their greatest spiritual experience To be able to find more of God. Watch this. God then brought them to this place. And made them leave their greatest spiritual experiences. To be able to find more of God. I mean think of this. What could have been any more greater than to know of the name of God. First revealed as Jehovah among Horeb. 
What could be greater than to witness the flaming fires of God writing the Ten Commandments? But yet God is saying, I want you to leave the greatest spiritual experience so you can encounter more of myself. You see, because friends, it's not just an experience. We do not base our eternal destination on past experiences. It has to be a current experience with Jesus Christ in your lives. Are you together with me tonight? You see, God doesn't want His people to be stuck in a comfort zone tonight. Some of us, we're just stuck in a comfort zone. We can tell you about the past. We can tell you about what has been. But we have no faith for uncharted territory. But you see, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What we can see is what we want to live in. What we have experienced is where we want to stay. But God is saying, you've got to go out into the unseen. You've got to cross over into a place that you've never been before. Listen, I love it, Brother Bram said in a message, I am the resurrection and life. He says, the trouble of it is with people today, they're trying to depend on past experience. They had some 20 years ago. You know what happened to that manna? It got wiggle tail in it overnight. That's exactly right. We're still going back on past experience. You know why? Because we know those grounds are familiar to us. We love to live in the past miracles, in the past experiences, in the past events, because we know those grounds. But as people of God, God told the Israelites, I want you to turn, and I want you to go into a land that you don't know anything of. Go into a place that you have no idea, because I will lead you tonight. You believe it, friends? Let me say, as great an experience as they were, they're expired. They're only good for certain seasons. You cannot live on past miracles. You cannot live on past experiences. They're expired and they were good for that season. But we are in a new season tonight. We're in a season where God has taken His people in and said, Go in and possess the land. You believe it, church? It's sad in these years from the time of our prophet's death to uh, current How many are still living in the wilderness? Yet we've had a great prophet like it unto Moses. And God has given us such a great message that we should be further up the road. But yet we just want to live on past experiences. We just want to go back to things that we know and things we're familiar with. And God is saying that it's going to take faith for the rapture. It's going to take faith to see us through tonight. You believe that? You see, past experiences cannot meet the challenge of now. Can you say amen? What am I saying, church? Past experiences is good, but now the bride of Christ must uh, be embodied and incarnate Jesus Christ. It's not, it's not enough just to read about it. It's not enough just to see it in Brother Branham. It's not enough just to see it in the prophets of old. It's not enough just to see it in the apostles. It's not good enough to see it in the prophets. It's not good enough just to see it in our beloved prophet, Brother Branham, this age. This message must be embodied and take on flesh in this age. you believe that? Hallelujah. You see, some of the Israelites did the same thing back there. Oh, they knew about it. They spoke about it. They told about the pillar of fire. But it had never embodied them. It had never became incarnate in their bodies. This is why they circled for 40 years in the wilderness. And the Bible said that old generation died because they never really obeyed the voice of the prophets. They talked about it. They talked about the experience. They can identify that Moses was a servant of God. Many are doing the same thing today. They'll tell you, Brother Branham, was the angel of this age. They'll tell you about this message. But they'll never allow this message to incarnate their bodies. They'll never allow it to embody their spirits. May God fill us tonight with the word of this age. You believe it, friends? So the bride of Christ must allow this word to embody and incarnate uh, them. Jesus Christ incarnate their lives. Listen to the first seal. Brother Bram says, at the same time, this uh, speaking about uh, the man of perdition, that this evil, this devil fall out of heaven and becomes incarnate in a man. The Holy Ghost goes up. And comes down, incarnate man. Amen. Oh my, what a time. You believe it? You believe God incarnated, Brother Branham? 
Come on, church. Hallelujah. Do you believe God is still incarnating people in this age? How never before the world has ever witnessed uh, Jesus Christ like they did. Amen. When Elijah the prophet came. But you know what it was? A wave sheaf offering. Hallelujah. That there's many more coming to their adoptions. I believe Brother Brown came to his adoption. And I believe there's a bride that's coming to her adoption tonight. You believe it, church? I love it. He says in 1955... Uh, believers position in Christ Lord put a fresh anointing On every minister here And every laity here Hallelujah Amen We can't go on past On past anointings We can't go on past experiences We need a fresh anointing On every minister And every laity In the church of God tonight You believe it? You love them tonight Second handed robe He says A second handed robe Was alright But He needed a fresh call in his heart from God. He needed a fresh anointing from God. He wore a second-handed robe when he came to the river. But he needed a brand new first-handed call from God. A first-handed power from God to perform the miracles. Praise God. We need a fresh encounterance. Amen. The fresh The same God that anointed Elijah. The same God can anoint the bride. Do you believe it, friends? The same God is anointing the church. Do you believe that? Amen. The wave sheaf offering was a symbol to us. Praise the Lord to dead denominations that listen, I'm not dead, I'm still alive. Amen. That prophet stood there and challenged from the east coast to the west and brought Jesus Christ back on the scene. Amen. Behind that, he said, there's a people that's coming to this maturity tonight. Do you believe it, brothers? Amen. What a time. He said he needed a brand new first handed call from God, a first handed power from God to perform miracles. You see, <laughs> what a thing this is. Amen. Elisha couldn't just go on the pass, he had to rely upon God for something fresh. So I read around talk about many people talking about Elijah's robe and Elijah's mantle and all these things. That's why when he was performing miracles, they were trying to imitate the old Elijah uh, miracles. Talking about robes. With a fresh anointing and a sword in his hands. Saying God is in our midst. You believe God is in our midst, church? We're not just a little old group just stuck back in a closet somewhere where the bride of Christ getting to be showed off one more time to the world. Do you love him? Remember the Israelites had circled this mountain for 38 years. 38 years they had went around this mountain of Mount Sinai. They went around actually that same place. If you go back and you look at the pattern of the 18th uh, in uh, Places that the Israelites encamped. I looked at the map and I began to trace. The first stop came here. It came over here. It go back around. Actually, it went around the mountain and circled the mountain for 38 years. The Israelites were circling that mountain. And if I'm correct, and this is a revelation, it was seven times that they went around Mount Ahorib. And God said, it's time to conquer it now. Amen. Just like the Israelites going around Jericho seven times. And God said, it's time to leave this mountain and go into the promised land. What a beautiful type of it tonight. Now they were to leave the mountain, advance into the unknown, the unseen, a place that had never been before. You see, fate is the unseen that brings us into our promised land. Fate brings us into our promised land. The unseen is our body change. The unseen is where you've never been before, but was in the mind of God. People are scared of the unseen. They're afraid of what God's going to do. But brother, if you've got faith in your heart, God wants to take you there tonight. You believe it? God now informs, he informs the Israelite in Deuteronomy. uh, As we read it, 1 and 21, he says that this... Move is required for you. He said, it's time for you to move now. He said, it's time in verse 21. It's time that you move from this place. It's time that you advance 
from this mountain. Understand now, and you think about it, they were not literally on Mount Sinai, but the 18 places where they encamped uh, was the circumference of the mountain. This is why God can say, you'll stay on this mountain long enough. I want you to leave this place and advance into uncharted territories. God is speaking, I believe, to our people in this last day. And he's saying, you become too familiar with it. You know all the ins and the outs and, and all the places. But I want to take you somewhere you had never been before. I want to advance you into a higher place with God. Into a deeper walk with God. Into a greater experience that you're not experienced tonight. So he tells them, he informs them in verse 21, that this move is required because he had a land, he had a home, he had an inheritance that is theirs to take. He did not want them to just stay there. He said, that was just experience I was given you. That was only to propel you to the place that I want you to go. Because I've got a house, I've got a home, I've got an inheritance, I've got a land that I want you to take tonight. Hallelujah. Friends, let me say this. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. Thank God for the miracles. Thank God for the miraculous. Amen. But we're going to a place that God is moving us tonight. He said, I have a land, a home, an inheritance that, uh, that, is, that is yours to take tonight. You see, I believe it's time for many of us to get away from the mountain tonight. Amen. It's time to get away from the mountain Amen, it's time to get away from all of that and just quit living on that, just saying, you know, this is fine. Notice, he told the Israelites, after that they crossed and they came now, he said, the old corn has ceased. So I want you to keep eating the old corn of the land. I'm going to take you into Jordan where you're going to eat the fruits of the vine, the revelation, and the wine, and the oil is over there. Amen, you can't eat on the old food anymore. You've got to eat on a fresh, skilled manner and the word of this age. You believe that? Pentecost, the word wouldn't work now. Amen, the Methodist word wouldn't work now. Amen, none of that will work. We've got fresh manner. You believe it, church? We have camped at this mountain for too long. Is that correct? We have been content to stay within sight of the past experiences that we've had. You see, as long as the Israelites were encamping outside of Sinai, they can look back and see Sinai. They love that. They enjoy that. As long as they can see their past experience in sight, oh, they were fine with that. And they were okay with that. But God says, you have stayed in that mountain long enough. You have stayed there long. You need to move from that place. Into the promise that I've given you. So they were so content with those, uh, with those familiar places, the sight of the past experience that they had. The scenery had became familiar to them. Understand now. The scenery had became very familiar to the Israelites. And God was saying, I believe God wants us to advance tonight. Do you believe that? God wants us to advance tonight. We looked at the scenery so long and it was beautiful. I'm, I'm preaching right in the Word tonight. They were looking back as long as they can look back. They saw the scenery of Mount Horeb. They loved that. They enjoyed that. Oh, that's wonderful. Praise God. We have a message. We believe a message. Praise God. You see, it's more than just saying that. It's more than just looking and seeing. Even the prophet's message from a distance. That scenery has become too familiar with us. God is saying now this Word has to be a reality in our lives. I believe that God wants more from us tonight. I believe God wants to advance us. You believe that? He wants us to head towards our possession and our promise tonight. He wants us to get out of our comfort zones and start walking towards our promised lands tonight. It's time for a circumcision tonight. It's time for a circumcision, for a fresh revelation. Well, praise God, I was circumcised in the wilderness. I was fine in the wilderness. You know, you know, you understand that most of the per- people that were circumcised died in the wilderness. Amen. And God says, but there's a new generation that's rising up that I'm going to circumcise again. There's a people in this last day of this message that I believe that God is circumcising by the Holy Spirit. You believe that? It's time for a recircumcision, a fresh revelation. Too many are looking back in the past, living in the glare of the past. 
Brother Branham said in 1964, turn on the light. He said, but their traditions that they were living in a glare of another age. They said, we believe Moses. Moses, who we believe. That's fine, friends. It's okay. Amen. We believe Moses. We believe Jesus. We believe Noah. We believe Elijah. But their message, listen, Moses' message cannot work today. Noah's message can't work today. Come on. We've been given a fresh revelation in this age. A Malachi message. Amen. A message with the power to transform our bodies. You believe that tonight? So the people then, we understand. He says, and, and God is his own interpreter in 1964. He says, the people are always walking in something that happened years ago. Is that correct? People are always looking back in something that happened years ago. You know, many people tonight, they're tied, they're bondage to a church because of something that happened years ago. Amen. That's right. That's true. They're, 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 they're under fear to a church, a building, a pastor, a preacher, somebody maybe that did them some good. You know, kiss their babies, bury their dead, and help them out in hard times. So because of that, they're, they're tied to that bondage. It's time to leave everything else behind us. Amen. Press into the promised land. You believe that? Amen. He said, uh, people always are walking in something that happened years ago. Well, praise the Lord. I, you know, I can't do anything. My granny used to go to this church. My daddy used to go here. The preacher bailed me out one time. He buried my, my mama. He married my children. I can't do anything. Let me tell you something. God's got a message. And he's not worrying about any bishop and popontates and anybody else. He's saying, step out into the promised land. Amen. Take your family and move out into that promised land. You believe it? So the people begin to move, we understand. We go to Joshua now. And Moses is taken and buried by God. You remember that? And Joshua now is a newly appointed, uh, uh, anointed leader over the Israelites. Quickly after the death of Moses, he mobilized the people and they crossed the Jordan. Now they're coming to a different phase. They overcome just past experiences. Now they're saying, look, you know what? We're going to go now. We're going to go with this Joshua. This Joshua is our Holy Ghost. He's got a great message. We're going to go because he's saying what Moses said. He's saying what the tape says. He's saying what the prophet says. Come on now. Amen. We're going to go with him because he has the word of God in his mouth. So he quickly bring the people together. They recognize the leadership of God upon Joshua. And Joshua now brings them to the place uh, to cross Jordan. We understand they're going a way that had never gone before. And as normal, God shows up when we step out by faith and move aside outside of our comfort zone. You realize that? When we do, when we move out of our comfort zone, God steps in. You see, the water, the Bible says, miraculously piled up and the people crossed on dry land. What a miraculous thing. You see, when you forget what is behind you and reach to the unseen, God does the miraculous. Amen. When the people now came under the headship of the Holy Spirit, Joshua, Jehovah's Savior, God began to do the miraculous. So he moves them now from the past into something that is now before them. And they witnessed the miraculous. They saw how the water went up on the side when the priest put the ark upon their shoulders. And the sole of their feet touched Jordan. The water moved back. And the Israelites rejoiced in this. They saw something fresh and something new and something wonderful. It's always good to experience God afresh, isn't it? When God does some miracles in our lives, it makes, us, uh, it makes us rejoice in knowing that God is with us. So the people of God are now closing in on their possession as we see it in Joshua. We read it in Joshua 5. And the people are out of the desert and now living in the promised land. What a transition now. They go from uh, Mount uh, Sinai into 18 stops in the wilderness. They stopped now at Kiddush Bornia. They finally crossed over and went into uh, uh, Jordan. They're there in Jordan. And God is saying, I want you to know there is something else greater now for you. Amen. Jordan is not all. There is something greater. Are you with me tonight? You can't just stop at Jordan tonight, friends. You can't just say, well, I came out of the wilderness. I'm in Jordan now. You've got to possess it. 
So people are now closing on their possession. And the people are out of the desert and now living in the promised land. You see, but they haven't yet possessed it. They're just living in it. Understand now, they just moved into this place, but they haven't possessed it yet. They're just living in the possession, but they haven't yet possessed it. What am I saying tonight? Go in and possess the land. They haven't yet possessed it. They're just living in it. But you see, God doesn't want us to visit a place we cannot possess. You see, God doesn't want us to just go to a place that we cannot possess. God brought them now into the uh, Jordan on this side of Jordan, into the promised land. And God is saying, I don't want you to be visitors here. I don't want you to just visit this place. I want you to possess this Holy Spirit. It's not good enough just to visit church and visit the presence of God. You must have the Holy Ghost inside of you. You believe it tonight? So he doesn't want us to just visit our promises. Hey, I mean, he wants us to possess our promises. And here the Israelites now and moved in now from Jordan into the promised land. And God is saying now, I don't want you to just visit this place. I don't want you to just stay here and just say, wow, this is wonderful. Wow, this is beautiful. Man, this is glorious. This is joyful. I love this. I enjoy this. God is saying, but it's yours. You can have it tonight. Go in and possess the land. Many of us, we walk around this message and wow, this is beautiful. Wow, this is wonderful. I enjoy this message. But you see, you're just visiting the land. You've got to possess it. You can't just visit this message. You've got to possess this word. You believe it tonight. He wants us to possess our promise. So the Israelites were living. They were benefiting. They were enjoying the provision of the promise, they looked all around, they saw it, it was good, but Joshua realized that something was wrong. He realized that they weren't sanctified. He said, you're not sanctified. He said, because you have come into this place now as a possession, but you're only living in it. You haven't taken a hold of this message. You haven't taken a hold of this word. There's something wrong in the camp of Israel. So the Holy Ghost, Joshua says, it's time that we have a circumcision. And this is why God had a recircumcision campaign to make certain everyone was current in their experience. They couldn't go in the wilderness experience. They couldn't go in Kiddisbornia's experience. They had to have a current experience even though they were living in Canaan's land. Even though they were living in the promised land. They had to possess the Holy Spirit. Oh, may God help us tonight. You see, you cannot take possession of a land without the Holy Ghost tonight. You believe that? You cannot take possession of the land without the Holy Ghost. It's very, very likely that many can go into Jordan but never get the Holy Ghost. There's very, it's very possible many people can visit the promised land but never take possession of it. Many people can go in there but never have it to take a hold of their lives. Have we not seen it? They've come right into the message, but never possess it. They've looked around at the awe and the splendor and the majesty of this, but it has never become a reality in their lives. So you cannot take possession of the land without the Holy Ghost. I want you to notice now, after the Israelites had a current experience under the Joshua ministry, the third pull of ministry, you understand what I'm saying? Understand what God did. The Bible said that God rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off them. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, after they had actually came in and became circumcised uh, by, by Joshua, the leaders of that day, God says, I'm going to roll off the reproach of the Egyptians from you. Hallelujah. You see, the reproach of the Egyptians are still upon many people, even in the ranks of the message. Because they went in, but they never allow it to get into their spirits and their bodies and their families and their church and changes in their lives. You believe it tonight? I want, you, I want you to understand now. After a circumcision, the reproach was rolled away. And I wonder why there are so many bearing reproaches in this message. 
uh, against this word that God has given us. They've never been circumcised. They've sat in message churches for years, sat on the message pastors for years. They've visited the land, but they've never possessed the land. Go in and possess the land. And they're reproached to this message. Live in adultery. Marry three or four times. Come on, church. Absolutely the truth. They don't want to take part in spiritual gifts. They don't want to be a part of the church. They don't want to handle gifts of the Spirit in the church. Nonsense. It don't work that way. You've got to be circumcised. Come on, somebody. You've got to be circumcised. So Joshua now perform a third pole ministry on the people of that day. And notice now without a circumcision or recircumcision, you're only enjoying and have obtained the benefits and provision of the promise. You see, without a circumcision, you're only enjoying and obtain the benefits and provision of the promise. You're only living in the joy of it. But uh, it is not yours. It is not yours. You can enjoy it. You can be part of it. You can say wonderful things about it. You can say, my, I felt the presence of God. I see people here. I see the miraculous. But it's not yours. You've got to have a circumcision by the Holy Spirit to possess the land. You see, friends, why there's so many in this message that are not having uh, overcoming power in their lives? You see why they can't walk away from the things of this world? They've never been circumcised. They're enjoying the benefits of this message. They're enjoying the awe and the splendor and the miraculous of this message. But it's not theirs. It's somebody else's. They're living off the vine and the life of the vine, but they're not part of it. Is that correct? Amen. You see, you have only written many people as we see it today. We see it in our lives. And they're living in the joy. They've obtained the benefits. They've obtained the provision of the land. But they're only riding on the backs of other people's experiences. And dedications. And uh, consecrations. And, and prayers. And revelation. That's right. Well, you know what? I know, I know a sister that is very spiritual. And she's my friend. Well, her experience can't work for you. Amen. This is not a follow leader revelation. Amen. Somebody said, well, I got a revelation. Follow me. There's no follow of the leader revelation. You've got to know it for yourself. You've got to know that the land is yours. You've got to know the revelation is yours. You've got to know the consecration and dedication and holiness is yours tonight. You believe that, friends? Too many are riding around on the backs of other people. Well, you know, the pastor is holy. The brother is holy. The deacon is holy. This brother over here has got a good experience. I'm going to hold on to their coattail. It don't work that way. Amen. You've got to take the land yourselves tonight. You believe it, friends? Listen to Master Spiritual Amnesia. Brother Bram said, you just belong to a denomination. If you just belong to a denomination, you are a Pentecostal grandchildren. God don't have any grandchildren. He has sons and daughters, but no grandsons and granddaughters. See, God don't have that. He just has sons and daughters. Amen. You cannot rely on past experiences. You cannot just say, well, you know, I, I came in under Joshua. You've got to possess the God that Joshua had. You can't just visit the promised land. You've got to possess the promised land. There needs to be a circumcision by the Holy Spirit. You see, too many of us are not clean, friends. We are in the camp and we are blessed because of it. But we haven't been purified. It's time to be purified. You know, the, some of the Israelites was in the camp, but they weren't purified. They were under the pillar of fire. They were under Moses' message. They were under the third book preaching of Joshua. But some of them were not purified. We have the same thing in our message. Many have come up under that umbrella, but never been purified. Are you with me tonight? You see, you can't visit the land without being holy. Amen. Is that right? You can visit the land without being holy, but you cannot stay there. Amen. That's right. You can visit the land without being holy, but you can't stay there. You can cross in this message. Amen. But if this word is not inside of you, you'll never take a rapture. You can visit the land without being holy, but you can't stay there, church. Possession demands purity tonight. Is that correct? Possessions demand purity tonight. 
There has to be a circumcision. Purity produces power to possess the night. You believe it? You see, too many of you are, are content with just visiting your promise. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. I know God said by his stripes that I'm healed. I know God said there'll be a rapture. You're only visiting the promise. Amen. You've got to possess the promise tonight. God told Joshua, take the people in and possess the land. Amen. Take the family in and possess the land. Don't just live in the land. Possess the land. Come on, church. Amen. Don't be content with visiting your promise. You visit the benefits but you're unable to possess the promise. You visited uh, the benefits, but you're unable to obtain the possession tonight. Many people have visited the promise, but they're not able to maintain the possession of it tonight. Come on, church. Uh, praise God. I believe God will heal me. I'll tell you right now. God has healed me. That's good, friends. But you've got to maintain that possession. You got to maintain that possession. You got to not just say by strife, I'm here. You got to walk into that promised land and say, Lord, I'm maintaining my possession. I'm not just walking into the promise. You love them tonight. You love the word tonight, friends. Amen. You see, friends, what I'm saying tonight is just too many of us is just a language. It's just the talk. It's just, well, I'm in it. I believe it. I'm in the message. I'm in the, this word. I believe I'm in the rapture. That's friends. You just visit in a place that is holy. But understand, it's very possible to visit a place that is holy and not uh, take possession of that place. The Israelites did that. Is that what the word says? They went right into that holy place, but never possessed it because they weren't circumcised. Amen. Do you love them tonight? You see, you can't settle there and have that place. Because of the lack of purity, you cannot, you cannot ever possess that place. You can never settle there or inhabit that, inhabit that place because of the lack of a circumcision tonight. You see, your knowledge will get you to the promised land, but it is your character that will enable you to stay there tonight. Amen. Your knowledge will tell you this message is right. Amen. There was an Elijah in this day. I'm going to stay in this thing. I'm going to stay where it's holy, but you got to possess it. Amen. You can't just have a knowledge of it. You can't just say, I've got a knowledge of it. Amen. You've got to be able to take it tonight. Your character will enable you, amen, to stay there tonight. Say, Lord, I'm staying here tonight, Lord. I'm not just here because everybody's here. I'm not just here because it's the thing to do. I'm not just here because I know by head knowledge that God sent a prophet. I'm not just in this holy place just by head knowledge. I'm here by revelation that God has given me the land and I will possess it tonight. Do you love him tonight? You see, some of you are acting like you're ready to possess your promise, but you need to be circumcised tonight. You need to be circumcised tonight. You need God to circumcise you tonight. Cut out all the old ideas out of your mind that, you know what, praise God. I'm already in the promised land. Bless God. I'm already in the promised land. I'm already over there. You're only walking in it. You've got to possess it. You're only circling that place. You haven't taken a hold of it. Come on, church. You need to take some time and get things clean up and clean out tonight. Say, Lord, I'm over in the promised land. What am I doing in this message without the Holy Ghost? It's been 30 years, 40 years. I've been in the message and I still haven't got the Holy Ghost. Take some time and get cleaned up and cleaned out tonight. Say, Lord, send the fire and burn the world out of me tonight. You love him tonight. You see, you will never be able to possess until you first allow God to circumcise and purify you tonight. I believe it's time for you to be sanctified. Listen, Red Bram said this in second coming of the Lord. He said, you're kissing and flirting with the world. The kiss on the cheek of Christ is a jeertean kiss. He doesn't want nothing to do with it. You committed uh, fornication with the world. You are committing adultery with Christ on him. as call, calling him your husband. What are we doing in the promised land and still flirting with the world? Amen. That just shows you haven't been circumcised. What are we doing in this glorious message, this promised land, and still not possess it? What are we doing in this message and still not seal with the Holy Ghost? What are we doing with it in this message and still living unholy? Amen. Come on, church. Amen. God wants you to live holy in the holy land. Do you love him now? 
Praise God, brother. Praise God, brother Joseph. All I was thought is, if I accept brother Branham and say he was a prophet and, and don't speak against this message, then I'm going to make it. The devil has deceived you, friends. Amen. Yeah. It's more than just saying brother Branham was a prophet. It's more than saying you're in a message. The Israelites was in the promised land, but they never possessed it as their own. That's why so many of them can see giants. That's why many of them can go back to Egypt. Did you realize, do you know by scriptures tonight, and I'm challenging you tonight, do you realize from scriptures there were some people that actually leave that holy place and went back to Egypt? Did you know that? Absolutely the truth. They crossed into Canaan's land and some of them left Canaan and went back into Egypt. Even because the poor, they never possess the promise. That's why they can go back to the old ways. Go back to the old food of the world. Go back to the old corn and the old, uh, the, the old wheat of the land, the old corn of the land. They didn't, they didn't want this new fruit. They didn't want this new revelation. It was too strong for them, you see. But there were some, hallelujah, who stayed there. Not only stayed in the holy place, but possessed that holy place tonight. You believe in tonight? I want to say tonight, today, for trying to live in a promised land, uh, Amen, it's over. Amen. The day for trying to live in a promised land is over, yet staying so close to the filth and culture of this world. The time for just trying to live in the promised land is over. You can't do that and yet live so close to the filth of the culture of this world. Some of them are doing that. Can you see the perfect time tonight? Can you see why Brad Brown said there won't be few that will be in the rapture? Can you see this mass uh, exodus that went out? Even some of them that went into this place. A good many of them, the Bible only named Joshua and Caleb. But I'm sure there were scoreless others that went into that place. But they could not live under the anointing of that place. It was too strong for them. They went back into Egypt. Oh, there's a bride. Hallelujah. That's anointed to live in the place that God wants them to possess tonight. You love them tonight. Amen. Notice that as soon as they went through the purification process, they didn't immediately possess the, the land either. Amen. After they got the, a circumcised uh, uh, some of the uh, young generation, they, just, they didn't right away just uh, possess the land. The word says that they waited to go forward until they had healed. Until God had healed them. We read the scripture tonight. They stayed in a camp in their specific place until they were whole. Isn't that what the word says? We read it tonight. They didn't just jump up and say, you know what? Uh, That's fine. It's all right. We're just going to go now. They had to stay in God's provided place until they were made whole. You know, God's got a provided place for all of us. And we've got to stay in that provided place until we're made whole. It's not just saying, we're well, blessed God, I'm circumcised, I got the Holy Ghost, I can do whatever I want to. No, you've got to stay in that specific place until you're made whole tonight. You believe it, friends? The word said they waited to go forward until they had healed. Is that correct? They stayed in the camp in their specific place until they were whole. You see, too many of us want to do battle before we are whole. Too many of us want to jump up and say, well, praise God. I got the Holy Ghost now. I can do what I want to. The Holy Ghost will get on the headship. Come on, church. The Holy Ghost will stay on the headship. The Holy Ghost will find a pastor and stay under headship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. I'm out in a message. I'm in the promised land. I got the Holy Ghost now. No preacher is going to tell me what to do. No pastor is going to tell me what to do. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm my own man. You're under the government of the Holy Spirit tonight. You believe it, friends? Look at it now. Amen. You see... It's, it's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. Even when people rise to that place to where they think they're no more than a pastor. Or they're no more than a church. They're no more than God. They're no more than their leader. They're no more than everybody. Amen. Then they need to have their own church. Is that right? Amen. They know more. You can never rise any higher than your pastor, friends. You got to stay under the leadership of where God has placed you tonight. Even though they had the Holy Ghost, God says, stay there until you're whole. Stand there until you're healed. Stand there until I restore you. Stand there until I give you everything you've lost. You love him now. 
But we don't want to stay in our place. Amen. God has a place uh, designed for us. He has a place He wants us to stay in and heal in tonight. You believe that? We must learn to stay in our place until we are healed. And Brother Bram, give this. I'm coming to a close. He said in the message, as I was with Moses, he says, Reuben meant sheep herder. God meant cattle raiser. Ephraim meant corn raiser. Now by spiritual discernment, Joshua, the new leader, by spiritual discernment, placed each one in there. Uh, he belonged. A very beautiful type, type today of what we need. Uh, a Joshua for today. Uh, the trouble today when we are coming to the promised land. God wants to raise sheep. Ephraim want, wants to raise something else or the other. Every man wants to be the same. Let God give one man a gift of healing. Every man wants to, the gift of healing. Ephraim and God and all of them wants to mix all up and come as one. But we are divided uh, in our positions tonight. See, I can take Brother Greg's position. Neither can he take mine. Amen. Come on, church. I can take Brother John's position. Neither can he take mine. We've got to stay in our place of leadership. Amen. If God's called you to be a laity, be the best laity there is. Amen. Serve God where you're at. Bloom where you're planted. Because God can give you the Holy Ghost to stay right there and operate tonight. So too often we want to force our way into places we're not whole for tonight. Is that correct? We want to force ourselves into places that we're not fully whole for tonight. Uh, when really we need to stay in our place and spend some time becoming whole tonight. We need to stay in this place. Say, God, I want to stay here and let God make me whole tonight. Amen. I want to stay here and let God make me whole tonight. Let God wash me with the word. Let God heal my wounds. Let God restore my spirit. Let God rejuvenate what I have lost tonight. Amen. You love him. Stay in the place and allow God to purify you and heal you tonight. Some of you have been broken, but that don't mean, amen, you need to hurry up, amen, and get out of your place where God has placed you to be whole tonight. Some of you have been broken, but that don't uh, mean that you should get in a hurry, amen. You need to stay there and allow God to heal you tonight. Some of you have been done wrong, but stay in your place tonight. Some of you have been lied to, but stay in your place tonight. Some of you have been addicted, but stay in your place. Amen. Some of you have been hurt, but stay in your place. Amen. Stay there and let God heal you. you got the Holy Ghost. Say under your Joshua. You love him tonight, friends. Amen. Possession only demands. Amen. Purity. Amen. Not only purity, but wholeness tonight. Amen. Possession not only demands purity, but wholeness tonight. You say, well, I got the Holy Ghost. Well, you need wholeness. Amen. I got the, nobody's going to tell me what to do. God will tell us what to do. If you got the Holy Ghost, you will be whole tonight. Let me close now. Allow me to flip the scene for a moment. I want you to notice that there came a day when it was time to get up and move forward into possession. Amen. It is time for some of you to get over your past and possess your future now. Amen. You have stayed there too long. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you need to stay there. Some of you need to get up from where you're at and say, God, I'm going to take the land now. Are we together tonight? Understand, I'm speaking to a mixed multitude tonight. I'm speaking to people that are sick. I'm speaking to people that are whole. I'm speaking to people that have been hurt and those that have been restored. And I'm flipping it now. God is saying, you stayed there too long. You've got to go in and take the land. You love them, church. Amen. There come a time that it was time to get up and move forward into the promised land. I believe it's time for you to get over your past and possess your future. Some of you have been licking your wounds a long time. Is that right? You have been using your hurt and your pain as excuse to delay your movement tonight. But go into the promised land. Hallelujah. Go into the promised land. You can't use that any longer. God is saying, get up and go into the land. Praise God. I know people that use that for a lifetime experience. I'll never go back to church because I got hurt. i never do this because I got hurt. Amen. You know why? Because they never got uh, circumcised and they never stayed long enough to get whole. That's why they have never got healed. Come on, church. 
May God help us tonight. I believe it's time for some of you to get over your past and possess your promise. You believe that, friends? Amen. Go and possess this. Get healed and get your possession. Amen. Tonight, get healed and get up and possess your land. You believe it? Some of you have been limping and lying around camp long enough. Way long enough tonight. Well, this limp, this hurt, these wounds, these things that I have. I, I, I've been limping. Listen, you should be whole by now. Amen. You've got the circumcision of the Holy Ghost. You shouldn't be limping around camp. You shouldn't be in this message this long, still limpering around saying, well, I still, I still got a desire for the world. I still want to go out and do the things of the world. You're still limping, even lying around camp long enough, church. It's time to possess your promise tonight. You believe it? You need to get into the prompt position for your possession tonight. Say, Lord, I'm getting out of the camp. Amen. God, I believe I've been healed by the word that's spoken tonight. Are you in that place tonight? Hey, we need to say, God, I believe I've been healed. I thank God for my healing. I'm not limping anymore. I'm not sick anymore. I'm not lying around camp anymore. I'm getting up and I'm going in and possess the land. Hey, man, you believe it? You need to get into position for your possessions tonight. You have visited for the last time. Hey, Amen. You have visited for the last time. Amen. You have visited for the last time. You have said, you know what? I'm in this message for the last time. Amen. You have said it long, long enough. I'm in this message. You have visited for the last time. Possess it in the name of Jesus. Leave your mountain. Get justified. Get purified. Get sanctified. And by becoming whole tonight. You believe it, friends? Move up into the baptism of the Holy Ghost and then press into the position of possessing the Holy Ghost himself tonight. Say, so, Lord, I, 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 I'm tired of just visiting church. I'm tired of just visiting this message. God, I believe now I can take this land. Go in and possess the land. I'm coming in tonight, Father, and I'm possessing my land. I don't know about you, church, but I'm tired of just visiting this place. Understand, you can go into a holy place and not possess it. But, Lord, I want it tonight. How many are willing to go in with me? Say, so, Lord, I'm going into this place tonight. God bless you. Amen. Let us all stand tonight. Oh, God is good tonight to us, isn't he? Amen. You appreciate him tonight. Amen. Go in and possess the land, friends. Amen. Go in and possess the land. Can you see why we have such a, a repeat of these things? Can you see the position of the message that we're in right now? You see why it's so quite possible that many people can live in a place that is so pure, a message that is so holy, but yet they've never possessed it because they've been visiting it. They've been laying, laying around it. They've been limping around it, but never got circumcised by the Holy Spirit. But I believe it's time to press on into the full Holy Ghost and say, Lord, I want this thing for me and my family, my household, myself tonight. I want this Holy Ghost. Amen. I want God to take possession of my life tonight. Go in and possess the land. I spoke about it. Amen. Last Wednesday night, write the check. Amen. Now go in. Amen. Not visit it, but take the land tonight. Amen. Get re-circumcised by the Holy Spirit. Stay in your place and let God heal you. Amen. Say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready tonight to take possession of my family, my longing, my belongings, and everything that God has promised me in this hour. Do you believe it, friends? What a great message we have. What a great message we have. What a great message we have tonight. A great, great, great message. It's not just to be talked about. It's not just a visit. It's not just a place to say, wow, praise God. Hallelujah. We're different than the other organization. You know different if you just visit in a place. If you're just walking around this land, you know different. If you just visit in this place, you haven't possessed it tonight. But I believe God is bringing the people to a place where they're possessing their lands. Saying, Lord, I'm going to get the Holy Ghost, Father. I'm going to be circumcised by God. I'm going to allow God to just bring you to the place where he can just me where he can make his word live in my life tonight let's bow our heads tonight father how we love you tonight lord and i worship you and i magnify your name and 
just looking back, Lord, at some of the old notes today, and I realize, Lord, that I've spoken some of these things, and the Holy Spirit says, go back and revisit some of these areas. And I want you to bring it to the people you preached on, writing the check. I want you to take them back uh, to these old landmarks. Bring them to that place tonight, Lord. Go in and possess the land. Help us, Lord, as believers to go all the way into this message. And possess it, Lord. It's quite possible to live in a holy place and not possess it. But God, I pray that you'll help us to possess the Holy Ghost tonight. Bless us, Lord. Bless the people tonight. Draw us nearer to you, Lord Jesus. Help us to surrender all. Not just to walk around Jordan. Not just to walk in the promised land. Not just to live on the experience of somebody else. Not just to ride on the back of someone else's sanctification or holiness. Because none of us are holy. All our, our holiness are, are filthy rags. But Lord, to rest on you and saying, Lord, without you, I can do nothing. Fill us tonight with your Holy Spirit. Rejuvenate us, I pray, dear God. Bring us into that place. Make this message a reality to us. Let it not just become just a place that we've gone into. Let it not just be such a past experience that we've had, but something current in our lives. Help us, I pray, Lord. Bring us to that place. Take us to that place, Lord. Take me to that place. Take me to that place of your presence. Take me to that place, Lord. I love you tonight, Lord. I worship you, Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, I'm going through. Yes, I'm going through. Until Sunday, God bless you. Shalom to you.